Hello friends, it's Katie back with another episode of my vlog. And today I wanna to talk about habits, good habits and bad habits, how to cultivate the good ones, how to eliminate or reduce the bad ones. Um, why am I on this topic today? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, tomorrow is, or tonight starting at sundown, is Yom Kippur, which is the end of the year in the Jewish calendar. We had Rosh Hashanah last week, which is the beginning of the new year. Um, so it's the New Year's time of year um, in the Jewish calendar. And obviously, lots of folks like to use the turning over of the year as an opportunity to make some New Year's resolutions and, you know, improve their good habits or eliminate those bad ones. Um, for me personally, it's also the turn of the year because it's my birthday on Friday. So the combination of the Jewish New Year and my birthday, both being in September, always gets me thinking about my habits in September and how I want to change or better myself um, for the future. Of course, any time is a good time to think about your habits and think about how you could become better about the things that you do. Uh, but I totally recognize that it's way easier to start um, some new program or, you know, really put, a, a, you know, light a fire under your butt about something um, when it's the beginning of the month or the beginning of the year um, or what have you. But that said, again, any time is a good time to examine your habits and think about making a change and put a change into play. Um, so first off, I want to talk about positive habits. Um, September, actually September 1st, um, marks one year of me doing a daily yoga practice and really committing to that and seeing what I can get out of a yoga practice. And you guys, the last year has been, um, well, completely transformative for me. Um, I feel better in my body. Um, I feel calmer in my mind. I feel just generally um, more positive. And I feel like that's all related to the daily yoga practice. I started last September with one of Adrian Mishler. That's Yoga with Adrian. Um, I will link her down below because you guys know I love her. Um, I started with one of her 30 days of yoga programs. She does one of these every year in January because, again, people love to make those New Year's resolutions. Um, but last year on September 1st, I decided, okay, I'll, I'll just pick one of her 30 days of yoga programs from I think it was the one from 2017, maybe. I don't even know. Um, and I committed to it. I said, okay, I'm going to try an experiment of doing yoga every single day for 30 days and see how it makes me feel. Um, there's a lot of theories that 30 days is pretty much what it takes to either form a new habit or conquer, uh, you know, getting rid of an old habit or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily 30 days for sure, but boy, it worked for me. Um, I did the 30 days of yoga every single day, and then I just kept going because I was feeling really good about it. Um, I had initially chose it as a compliment to my running practice because, um, you know, you need to do a lot of stretching when you're running. And th that was the, the genesis of it. But uh, like I said before, I have learned so much from yoga this year. Um, I'm never stopping. I'm planning on this being a lifetime practice. I love doing yoga every day. Um, it makes me feel incredible. So um, there's a great example of, you know, I, I committed to do it for 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, I reevaluated and said, oh, don't stop doing this. This is fantastic. Let's keep going. Um, and one of the interesting things that Adrienne tends to do in her videos, I've noticed a lot, is she will talk about how choosing the video and choosing to press play on the video is the hardest part. And I think when you're first setting up a new habit, that is the hardest part, right? Showing up for it over and over again, even if you don't feel like doing it. Um, at this point though, I, it's, it's funny because when she says, oh, you've, you've already pressed play, that's the hardest part. I always think, oh, that's not hard at all. I love doing yoga. And in fact, I consider my daily pr yoga practice to be, 
you know, in addition to my personal time, it's like a gift that I'm giving myself every single day. Um, so it's this beautiful thing. And I do think, again, if you're starting out or if you're having a hard time getting into it, starting the video each day would be the hard part. Um, but persevering, keeping going is the really important part, right? Um, it's, it's kind of with any new habit, there's this initial stage. We talk about it as the first 5%. Like the first 5% of doing something is usually the hardest part. It's that momentum problem, right? You've, you're, you're not doing it before you start doing it and you have to overcome your own inertia of not action. But then once you've actually started doing it and started to kind of get a feel for it, you go, okay, this is working. This is great. I'm going to keep going. But there is a part in the beginning um, where it is easy to give up on your new habits that you're trying to form. And so it's really important, again, especially in that first 30 days, to continue to show up for whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, so you start and then you have to keep going. A lot of people ask me, how am I so dedicated to my yoga practice and my running practice? And again, like I keep saying, I love them and I love the way they make me feel. But part of the program for me is to just keep going, to do yoga every day, to do a run three days a week and try not to skip my runs unless, you know, I'm experiencing some body ache or problem or whatever that makes it ill-advised to run. Um, I do show up for yoga every day, no matter how I'm feeling, for sure. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, starting is hard, and then you have to keep going. And you have to keep going even if you don't feel like it every single day. You kind of got to kick your own butt and say, nope, I committed to this. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing it. And then eventually you get past that part where it's challenging, and you're just at the part where, hey, this is my new habit, and I just do it. And it's great. Um, now that's not to say, yeah, sorry, that's not to say that you can just keep going indefinitely and just keep growing and, you know, achieve some high thing immediately. Of course, the kind of counter to just keep going is we also have to set reasonable goals for what we're doing. And, um, with something like yoga practice, it's very slow, it's very small and gradual, and you keep showing up over and over again and growing that practice and getting better and better at what you're doing. Um, and then you can do more. I'm much more flexible now than I was a year ago. I'm much better able to get into the various poses and hold them for extended periods of time without experiencing discomfort. Um, so, you know, there, there is, you have to aim for the right mark. And I think, you know, if you, if you aim too high, it can be very discouraging because it's hard to reach that goal. Um, and if you aim too low, um, things can feel too easy. And so then you kind of need to step it up a little bit. So I think it's a really good idea when considering developing a new habit to set reasonable goals and expectations, but then also keep reevaluating the situation because, you know, as you're going through your 30 days of yoga or 30 days of whatever, um, there's going to be changes. You're going to discover things about yourself, about your thing that you're trying to do. Um, you should constantly be learning from your experiences and sort of folding that back into how you're doing things. Um, but I guess that message is just, again, setting reasonable goals is uh, really key to sticking it with um, developing a new habit. And then the last one is, of course, if you mess up, if you if you miss a day, if you, you know, don't do it or whatever, don't take that as, oh, I, I blew it, it's over, I'm done, right? If you mess up and miss it, keep going, do it the next day, whatever. Um, trying to keep like a perfect streak can be negative, I think, um, because, you know, again, if people miss one day or one time or whatever, it's like, okay, well, the whole thing's over, I might as well give up. Mm come on, we all make mistakes, we all have off days, whatever, don't worry about it, just keep going. Um, whatever you practice is what's going to increase, right? So keep on practicing those good habits, keep on practicing those good things, you're going to increase that in your life. Um, now, the flip side of that, of course, is if you keep on practicing negative habits, that's also going to increase. So of course, along with trying to develop and uh, cultivate good new habits, 
I also like to take a look at my bad habits and say, okay, how can I improve things here and not be, you know, doing whatever the negative thing is. And people have a lot of bad habits and there's a lot of ways you can clean things up, but I'm going to offer up um, this bad habit that lots of people engage in, um, which is too much phone use. Um, I think we're all guilty of it unless you are some ascetic hermit who lives up, you know, in a, in a shack up on the mountain or something. I think uh, as members of the modern world here in 2021, we are all constantly on our phones all the time. And it's not healthy. It's not a good habit. It's been likened to a drug habit. And I think that that's a pretty fair um, assessment. You know, uh, it's been proven time and again that we all get like a little dopamine hit from looking at our phones, looking at our social media accounts, seeing that somebody liked a post or somebody engaged with something that we said, right? We we all want to be paid attention to, right? Um, So it works like a drug where it creates a feedback loop where you look at your phone, you feel good. And then you look at your phone again, you feel good again. You look at your phone again, you feel good again. But... We all know that you wind up just sort of going into this endless scrolling through social media and, you know, you think to yourself, oh, I'll spend five minutes looking at my phone and then like, whoops, half an hour later, an hour later, who knows how much longer, right? Um, Where have I been for that amount of time? Oh, I've just been like, you know, on Reddit or on Instagram or on Twitter or something. Um, Not helpful to actually growing as a person and being a positive force in the universe or living the life I want to lead, right? Um, so it, it can become a very bad thing as well with overuse. Um, I don't think it's advisable to get completely off your phone or completely off the internet because that is how we're all connected these days. Actually, this uh, prop I have is one of my kids' phones because I'm recording on my phone right now. And of course, you're watching this on the internet. So it does seem like a conflict that I'm telling you to do that less. But I think we can all identify ways in which we're wasting our own time online and on our phones. Um, And I think if you're a parent, this becomes really obvious really fast because kids are like little mirrors and sponges. And of course, they want to do what you're doing. So everyone I know who is a parent of a small child is constantly trying to prevent their kids from accessing various screens or, or, you know, limiting the amount of screen time those little kids have. Um, but if the parents are constantly glued to their phones, you're setting an example for your kids that it's totally okay to be constantly staring at a screen, right? Um, when your kids get older, my kids are between 11 and 15, they get their own phones, and then you get a whole other problem of how do you self-regulate about your phone use. And we as a family have gone through lots of different systems and rules. And um, what we've actually found works the best is setting actual limited phone hours for people. So we have a rule when the kids first get up in the morning, they're not supposed to be jumping on their phones first thing. I also go by that rule. I don't look at my phone um, with the exception of I do run my yoga program off of my phone, but I don't look at social media or the news or the wider internet at all. Um, until after 9 a.m. So there's a whole period of time in the morning where I'm up, I'm doing stuff, I'm getting ready for my day, and I'm absolutely not engaging with the news cycle, the crazy social media cycle, or any of that stuff, because it's a terrible way to start your day. And everyone who's talking about making better habits on the internet right now is like, don't look at your phone first thing in the morning, get up, like drink some water, do some yoga, write in a new journal, Um, eat something, go for a run or a bike ride or whatever, don't be looking at your phone, right? Um, So that's a pretty key one. Another one is don't use your phone in social situations. Um, You know, if we're out having fun doing something, why do you have your phone out and suddenly you're on the internet? It doesn't make any sense to be on your phone in a social situation. Now, if you are hanging out with friends and you want to snap a pic of what's going on or grab a video or, you know, something like that, sure, use your phone as that tool. But like, why in a social situation, why would anyone be like showing me a cool thing on their phone? Like, dude, text me a meme if you want to send it to me, right? I'm, I'm here to socialize with my friend in person 
we don't all need to be, you know, face down in our phones for that, right? Um, it, another one is turning notifications off on the phone um, or training yourself and making the habit of not just jumping and responding because your phone made a noise. It's like this weird Pavlovian response. I guess not weird at all because tons of people have allowed themselves to be trained by their phones this way, but it's like phone makes a noise, suddenly oh, somebody's looking at their phone. And it's like, no, we, do you have to right this second? Are you expecting a message that is so dire and important? Then don't look. Feel free to not look at whatever the notification is until you're ready to. Um, another rule we have is no phones at mealtimes, which seems really obvious to me, but I'm constantly hearing about other parents on the internet talking about how, oh, phone use is so out of control in their house and everyone's on their phone during dinner. And it's like, well, I don't know who's in charge here. Are you the parent? Like, make a rule that no one should be on their phone during dinner. And again, even if there's a notification, if the phone rings, don't answer it. Like when I was a kid, when we didn't have cell phones, if someone called during dinner time, we didn't get up to answer the phone. We let the answering machine get it. And after dinner, you go check the message, right? There's no reason to let the phone interrupt all the stuff that you're doing just because you're curious to know what that noise was about, right? Um, so these are all ways that we can be better about interacting with our phones. Oh, uh, the flip side to the morning time limitation is also the bedtime limitation. Um, tons of studies have come out that show you should not be looking at a device in the last two hours before you go to bed at all. Um, and again, I'm just gonna say, especially not social media or news because of the way that the social media systems and the news system just are designed to jack you up and get you like enraged about something. Like, is that really what you wanna be doing in the last two hours before you're going to bed? I don't think so. It's not a good way to wind down. It's not a good way to help your brain to relax and get ready to go to sleep. So in addition to not looking at my phone before nine in the morning, I don't look at my phone after eight o'clock at night. That's right, I do go to bed at 10 p.m. I wake up really early in the morning, so that's when I go to bed. But um, these have all worked fairly well for me. Um, it's hard sometimes. I do wake up some days and go, oh, I kind of want to check Instagram and see if I got, you know, notifications or whatever. Um, but I just control myself and don't, and I wait a few hours and then check it after nine. Um, and that works really well for me and I feel a lot healthier about my phone use, my relationship to the phone, my relationship to social media and the internet in general um, due to making that change. Um, so, but again, just like making a good habit, you have to set reasonable goals and expectations for yourself. Don't say, no phone use, I'm never gonna use my phone because that's not gonna work, right? Um, so, you know, make it reasonable. And again, just like with a good habit, if you're trying to stop a bad habit, if you mess up, if you miss a day on your program, don't worry about it, just keep going. Don't worry about that perfect streak. The perfect streak is fictional, it doesn't matter. Um, you're probably not gonna get there and it's better not to focus on it. Um, it's better to just focus on trying to do your best each day, uh, trying to emphasize those good habits and, you know, keep cycling back to the things you want in your life and try to eliminate or reduce the bad habits in your life. Um, none of it is about being perfect. Again, all of it is just about trying to make improvements. Even the tiniest little ones, they add up over time and they can help you feel a lot better about yourself, your life, and everything that's going on. All right, you guys. I am going to wrap it up here. Hopefully you have gained something from this little talk about habits. Um, curious if you have any plans to cultivate a new habit or try to eliminate an old bad habit um, for the future. I will always recommend uh, starting a yoga practice. I think that everyone can benefit from yoga. Like I said before, I am going to link uh, Yoga with Adrian down in the comments below. Um, she might not be the right yoga instructor for you, but you know, give her a try. See if you like it. If you don't like her style, try another yoga instructor. There's thousands of them on the internet. You can find so many free yoga practices on YouTube. It is 
amazing. Um, all right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I will be back in a few more days with another episode of my vlog. Until then, stay safe and take care out there.